Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Chill Town Hoops. I'm your host, Jermaine. The youngsters call me OG. My friends call me J-Dub. Let's get to it. Before this Milwaukee-Boston series started and I found out that Middleton wasn't going to play, it was 100% clear to me that Jalen Brown was going to be the difference in this series. Well, why is Jalen Brown the difference in this series? Even, even though he's already, gonna, he's already an integral part of what they're doing, He's going to be the difference in this series. The reason why he's going to be the difference in this series is because the rest of those guys, Grayson Allen, Pat Connaughton, uh, those guys can't play you to a tie. That can't happen. Because now they got to pick up their offensive game. Your game offensively is already going to be at a high level. You can't let them off the hook by allowing them to play you to a tie and you being below average or where you are offensively. You can't allow them you can't allow them to do that. And he did that in game 1. He didn't give them anything offensively, defensively he was lackluster. He wasn't really doing much. He didn't really he didn't give them any he didn't give them any energy. He wasn't very much of a factor in that game. Last night he made it a point to go after Grayson Allen. That was the difference in 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 the entire game. For him, I'm going after this guy. I'm going to make this guy guard. And I'm not going to make him guard for stretches. I'm not just going to make him guard for stretches. I'm going to make him guard often. I'm not going to let him off the hook at any point. And what the Boston Celtics did was they fed off of that. Because they kept going to him early and often. And he set the tone for them. Because now what that does with Grayson Allen, who is a shooter, who doesn't really have much responsibility offensively, his responsibility offensively is to make shots and be solid defensively. Make shots because Giannis is going to create a lot of space for you. So make open shots and just be solid defensively. So now what Jalen Brown does when he goes after him, offensively and he, and he puts him on the defense constantly now that takes away from his offense because he can, he can't trade baskets with Jalen Brown no he's not good enough to trade baskets with him and I thought that Jalen Brown did a great job of putting him on the defense I thought he did a fantastic job of putting him on the defense 25 points in the first half he didn't settle for anything he kept his game right where he needs it I thought that he was really good last night and I and I thought he tapered off. I thought he tailed off at the end because, I mean, that's Jalen Brown. I'm, I'm not surprised at that. That that's very much who he is. He's a guy who can go for 28 in the first half, and you he might not score in the second half. That's who Jalen Brown is. That's that's very much his game. But that 28 that he'll give you in the first half could be monumental, and the rest of the guys will just take over. I stand on this when I say it, and I said it months ago. I thought it when he first came into the game that he was going to be special, and I stand on it today. In the next year, two years tops, we're going to have a very serious conversation about Jay, about Jason Tatum being the best player in the game. He hasn't figured it out yet. The game hasn't slowed down for him just yet. He's getting there, though. He's getting really close, but the game hasn't slowed down for him yet. And the reason why I know that is because he falls in love with the long ball. Which he was efficient. He's he's been efficient at in this in this series. I think he's shooting nine for twenty, nine for nineteen. I'm sorry, nine for nineteen for the series. But what he does is he lets guys off the hook offensively by minimizing his mid range game. Once the game slows down for him and he goes to that more offensively, he's going to be impossible. He's going to be in that Bryant uh, KD. He's going, to be, he's going to be in that conversation because he's going to be that kind of scorer. The game hasn't slowed down for him yet. The commitment is obviously there defensively. It's obviously there defensively. He's definitely 100% committed. I see his hands stay busy. I see his feet moving. I even see him getting physical with guys. Yeah, he had a difficult time trying to get physical with Giannis. But I actually see the effort there defensively. He's gotten smarter. His game has improved mightily, no doubt about it. I, I, I honestly feel like we're going to have a serious conversation in another, in another year, two years tops, that Jason Tatum is the best player in the game. 
I stand on that. No question about that. When I'm watching Giannis last night, I'm thinking about a carpenter. And what I mean when I say I'm thinking about a carpenter, I'm thinking about a guy who he's doing his work and it it looks really hard. And then he goes into his bag and realizes, oh, wait a minute, I got this tool right here. And then all of a sudden the game isn't, even all of a sudden the, the, the carpet, it just, it just goes down flat. And it's not a problem at all now. A minute ago, he was really struggling at putting this piece in and putting this piece in. But then he realized that, wait a minute, I got this tool right here. And I could use it regularly. And it made his job less difficult. Well, that's kind of what happened last night with Giannis. Giannis looked to me like the 2019 Giannis that went up against Toronto. Where they built that wall against him and they backed off of him. And he's just crashing in the guys and he's trying to figure it out and it doesn't look it just it doesn't look as simple as it is for him. Only except in the in the in the second half, he recognized that wait a minute, I've been working on this. And I do have this mid-range in my game. And it is respectable. Then he starts using it, and all of a sudden, the game starts to open up for him. I think he had 18 points in the third quarter. He knocked down three straight mid-range shots. And that's primarily because he's a lot smarter. Now, when I talk about defense, like I just told you guys with, Jay, with, with Jason Tatum, I think that Al Hawford and Grant Williams did a great job defensively on Giannis. Well, what do you mean they did a great job defensively on Giannis? We're talking about Giannis and Drew Holiday, 6 for 23 in the first half, including Giannis going 2 for 12. Well, that's one for eight against Hartford, by the way. One for eight against Hartford. Well, how is that How is that big? And what is he doing there? Well, what he's doing, him, both him and Grant Williams, what they're doing is they're allowing Giannis to bring the fight to them. And not only are they allowing Giannis to bring the fight to them, they're standing their ground. I'm not going to let you bring the fight to me and bowl me over and bully me. No. I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to force you into tough shots. Because that's really the only way that you can cover Giannis. Stand your ground against him. You're going to have to eat something. And what they started to eat early, I mean, I'm sorry, what they started to eat in the second half, early in the second half, was the mid-range. That's why his offensive game opened up. That's why he did what he did in the third quarter. Because he recognized that and he used it. But both Grant Hill, Grant Hill, I'm sorry, Grant Williams and... Al Hartford decided, we'll eat that. No problem. But you are going to bring the fight to us. And not only are you going to bring the fight to us, what we're not going to do is we're not going to back down. I thought that the Boston Celtics did a great job in guarding for the majority of the game on the long ball. And let's make no mistake about it. I mean, we, 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 we live in a three-point league. Yeah, we live in a three-point league, so a lot of teams shoot the long ball. But... To hold Milwaukee to what they held them to shooting the long ball, I thought that that was guarding guarding the three point line. I thought that that was incredible for them. I thought that Grant Williams and and Hawford not only did they do a good job last night. I mean, they've done a great job on Giannis this entire series. We're talking about a guy that's shooting under forty percent and eight turnovers in the series, right? In the series, held them to sixteen percent shooting the long ball last night. 16%. I thought that that was a great job that they did. Now, the bright side to Milwaukee was Bobby Portis looked really good. Bobby Portis looked really good. Connaughton looked good. At, Connaughton looked good also. He's a D and three guy. Absolutely, he looked good. And they did a good job in the second half dealing with Boston. I mean, they held them to 46 points. Held them to 46 points, and I think that was primarily due to them chasing them off the three point line, rebounding the basketball particularly on the defensive side, right? Holding them to one shot and just staying solid. And he did that. Now, the question is, can that defensive effort, can you bring that defensive effort every game for the entire game? Because they did that in game one. They absolutely did that in game one. And I also thought that they did a good job in making free throws. I mean, we need that. I mean, Boston shot almost 88% from the strike last night. You know, we, the, the free points, as opposed to Milwaukee, 
who shot 65%. You know, Giannis is shooting barely 60% from the stripe in this series. He shoots 72% for on the season. That's not going to get it done, my man. That's not. Mm -mm. And I understand that they're playing really good defense, but you are going to go to the stripe. You're absolutely going to go to the stripe. So in the process of you going to the stripe, you got to convert. You absolutely have to convert. No doubt about that. So... This series is a great series, I think, and I, I think I, 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 I'm going to pick Milwaukee in six still, but this is a great series, absolutely. And since we're on the subject of great series, I think that that Golden State series, I still think that Golden State's going to make quick work of them. I thought that the game plan with Ja was to keep him in front of them. We'll eat the long ball from you all night long. He went five for 12. Okay. Now, with him shooting that, what that does is that keeps the defense at least honest. And he's so he's so dynamic and so athletic that it's so difficult to crowd him because he'll just blow your doors off. Right? He will just blow your doors off. So Jaws one of those guys where it's very difficult to stop him. And he's another one like Jason Tatum, that game hasn't slowed down for him yet. He just plays fast. Because once he gets that stop and pop in his game. He's going to be really difficult to deal with offensively. Defensively, he's on a really good team. And that that has a tendency to mask your deficiencies. Because defensively, that Memphis team is one of the best. I mean, I think they did a great job on Steph Curry and Clay last night. Steph, Clay, and Poole. Uh, six for 29 on the long ball between the three of them. Six for 29 on the long ball between the three of them. I thought that they did a great job in contesting shots, running them off the three-point line, and making them make tough shots. I thought that they did a really good job at that. They got to shore up the backboard, though. Golden State, who doesn't have a big guy like you guys do with Jaron Jackson and Clark, who I love, by the way. Clark gives them such great minutes. His energy, what he brings to them, he gives them great minutes. But you guys can't get out-rebounded. By a smaller Golden State team. That has to get shored up. I'm not expecting Ja to go for 47 or 45 every night. Mm -mm. That's not realistic. Right? That, that That's not realistic to, to think that that's going to happen. I mean, the fact that Clay didn't have any free throws last night suggests to me that Clay wasn't really being that He wasn't that aggressive going to the basket. And, I mean, Clay is a long ball shooter. We all know that. We know Clay is a long ball shooter, and we know that the majority of his buckets comes on the long ball line. He will try to get to the basket, but for the majority of his of, of his buckets, he's going to shoot the long ball. And I think that Desmond Bain did a good job chasing him off the three-point line. Zaire Williams also did a good job at that, but Desmond Bain's offense has suffered because of it. Absolutely suffered because of it in these last two games. 5 for 17 from the floor. 2 for 9 on the long ball. This is the same guy who, if I'm not mistaken, he made 15 threes in two games. And backed it. 8, eight, eight in game 3 and 7 in game 4 in Minnesota. But, with that being said, it's a lot different covering Steph Curry and Klay Thompson than it is D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Edwards. You're going to get headier guys. You're going to get smarter guys. You're gonna get a craft. You're gonna get guys who are who are craftier. You're gonna get guys who will take bigger shots and make bigger shots, and they're not gonna let you off the hook. And Desmond Bain's offense has suffered because of that, because he's had to chase those guys around. I think that Dylan Brooks has got to sit, and when I say he's got to sit, I mean he's got to sit minimum two games. One game, definitely. Minimum two. Ma maximum two. Not minimum, I'm sorry. Maximum two games. And that was dirty. That was completely dirty. Is Dylan Brooks a dirty player? I don't know. But I know that that was dirty. That was absolutely dirty. And he's got to sit. Well, Draymond had a flagrant two. That wasn't dirty. Mm -mm. That wasn't. When, when you're swiping at a guy's head and he breaks his arm, yeah, that's dirty. 
Jaron Jackson has to be a lot smarter than what he is defensively. Now, I understand, oh, he's a young player, and this is what young players do. This is about learning. And we're talking about in, in, in the eight playoff games that Jaron Jackson has played in, he's fouled out of three of them. That's almost half. And this is one of the better defenders, if not the best defender that they have. He's got to play smarter. And what I mean when I say play smarter, I mean him fouling early in the game. Him playing with his hands or him running over Draymond Green in the meat and potatoes of the game with foul number five. Well, the defense needs to communicate better, right? But he needs to be more aware of that. He absolutely needs to be more aware of that. Um, I'd like to get a better effort from Andrew Wiggins offensively. You know, 6 for 16 is not going to get it done against this Memphis team. Even though that's still a, a solid 16 to 18 that I'm going to get from him. But I do need a better effort from him offensively. When, when I got guys like Steph Curry that aren't doing it, when I got guys like Klay Thompson who aren't doing it, I do need him to step up more and give me more. Um, I still think that Memphis makes quick – I still think that Golden State makes quick work of Memphis. I don't think that this series – I'd be surprised if this series went to six games. I would be surprised. If it did, I think it ends in six, six tops. But I think that Golden State beats these guys in five games. Um, this playoff basketball stuff is absolutely awesome. I absolutely love it, guys, and I'll see you soon. You know where to find me at. But until then, take it light, but take it.